Next up, we have another talk that was rescheduled from the 2022 JMM special session on recent advances in packing. Our speaker is Kaso Okujo, who is a professor in the math department at Tufts University. Professor Okujo studies pure applied and computational harmonic analysis. Today, he will tell us about P-frame potentials. Take it away, Kaso. Thank you very much, and thank you uh, for the organizer for the invitation and uh, for making sure that we we still uh, give this talk even after uh, GMM was postponed and canceled eventually. So thank you. So this is a, a, a work that has been sort of ongoing for several years. Uh, I've had like a number of collaborators, like most recently, uh, this is a work with uh, Ben Avadel, uh, and uh, um, Asaf Goldberger, uh, and then previously, uh, this was based on work done with uh, Martin Euler and uh, some of the other students at Maryland. <laughs> so today I want to sort of, uh, okay, I think, okay. So this is the outline of my talk. I want to sort of uh, talk a little bit about like uh, the different potential in general with some connection to some of the optimization or one of the optimization problems that uh, Dustin just sort of uh, talked about. And uh, the last part of the talk is uh, to talk about like what happened in dimension two, which um, uh, I think I gave a similar talk to this one like about two years ago at the CODES seminar. And um, we haven't made too much progress. We've made like um, uh, a few recent progress. So I'll, I'll try to describe what we've done so far and uh, sort of show you what sort of seemed to be fascinating and interesting about the problem at the same time. All right, so the question that I want to address uh, are related to two kind of potential. So the first one is of a discrete family of potential. Uh, this is uh, the definition over here. So there are three parameters that I need to sort of uh, keep track of, the number of points, the dimension, and uh, sorry, two parameters that I, uh, no, three. So the number of points, the dimension, and the strength of my potential. So P will be the strength of the potential, D will be the dimension, and N will be the number of points. And so my goal is actually to sort of try to uh, understand the minimizer of, of this family of potential. Uh, uh, I'm going to usually denote like um, mu P N D of uh, the value of uh, this uh, potential at uh, its minimizer. And uh, what I'm actually interested in, and this is uh, somehow like connected to what uh, Dustin was talking about, is whether or not there are some sort of universal uh, optimizer. So what I meant by universal optimizer is optimizer that are still like a main optimizer for a large class of P. So for instance, uh, Dustin uh, uh, mentioned especially like uh, the case where P is equal to infinity here. He was trying to sort of uh, uh, minimize the maximum angle between uh, between any two vector, and uh, this is uh, this is an interesting problem. But uh, maybe for p uh, not equal to infinity, uh, you can sort of maybe exploit the smoothness of the function to sort of find the potential. And hopefully, uh, if you can prove that that potential sort of uh, remain like uh, optimal even when you tend to infinity, that will be like a class of uh, universality that I want to sort of consider. Uh, today, I'm not going to talk too much about the universal property of this uh, problem, but uh, I want to understand in general this uh, minimization problem. Uh, there are three special cases at least that I think have been of interest to many uh, in the community and many people on this, uh, on this uh, uh, call right now. The case P equal to two goes back to the work by Matt and uh, John. Uh, that uh, who proved that uh, for p equal to two, like uh, we know completely the minimizer of this object, and they are exactly of uh, a tight frame that we, we all know. Uh, for p equal to four and some uh, even value, uh, this is related to the uh, spherical T design problem. And uh, in particular, p equal to four under some sort of uh, stress, uh, assumption, this is exactly related to the SIG problem, uh, SIG POVM problem that also have been sort of a feature in uh, many of the previous seminars. So uh, the family that I am interested in has some very special, like uh, special case that, that are known to be quite difficult, but quite interesting at the same time. And uh, my goal is actually to not necessarily try to sort of uh, give like a full result, but to understand the class of optimizer for this problem in general, and whether or not we have this sort of universality problem uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, so, 
I just want to sort of um, uh, give like uh, a better intuition of what I meant by universality. And this is a model result that uh, I believe like uh, was approved by Cohn and Kumar, but probably a little bit before then there was already like uh, a paper. Uh, I forgot exactly who the author were. But this instance of, uh, of, the, of universality is a way I'm sort of taking this title from. So uh, for a finite set of point on the units here in D dimension, uh, we look at uh, some special configurations. So these are set of endpoints, and uh, we sort of restrict the number of distant inner product that we can have. Let's assume that this, this, uh, this number of inner product is M. Then we're going to sort of say that this is a sharp configuration. Uh, if uh, it's a spherical or uh, two, if it's a two M minus one spherical design, okay. So that's what a sharp uh, configuration will be. And what Kohn and Kumar prove, they prove that for a large class of functions. So here, this is uh, any function f from zero to uh, four to r, which is completely monotonic. I'm going to sort of give a definition of completely monotonic like later. But uh, what you sort of have to think about it somehow like uh, you want like the derivative to sort of uh, change sign as uh, you sort of taking more and more derivative. So if you have like a completely monotonic function and uh, if you can sort of find a sharp configuration with a given side, then it's going to be an optimal configuration for this entire class of functions. So this is a single function or a single class that's actually optimizing a family of potential. And that's what I meant usually when I say something is universal. And uh, my hope is to try to sort of convince you that there are many universal uh, uh, configuration that are sort of uh, optimal for the different potential that I, I defined earlier. So just to sort of uh, make some general remark about like uh, the, the minimizer. So this is a uh, pretty straightforward to sort of prove like uh, if you give me any uh, P, any N and any D, if I look at this as a function of P, then uh, so the minimum value as a function of P, then it has some very interesting property. It converts to the infinity case uh, in fact, if I have like uh, a sequence of minimizer for each of the P, and if I take the cluster, uh, uh, any cluster of them, then it's going to sort of be a minimizer for the infinity one. Uh, the function is continuous as a function of P, in fact, is non-decreasing. And uh, uh, we know the asymptotic in terms of N as uh, N goes to infinity, uh, this value sort of uh, as a sequence of N sort of behave like uh, uh, N squared essentially. Uh, the other thing that I want to sort of mention is that the minimizer for any value of P between zero and infinity is always going to sort of be like a spanning set for RD. So you automatically get a frame for any of these uh, minimizing sequence here. So uh, I want to actually connect this problem to a broader problem, which is a problem of minimizing exactly the same sort of quantity, but uh, when I sort of look at this in the continuous domain. So this is uh, a notion of probabilistic frame potential that Martin and I, we introduced uh, uh, in 2012. And uh, it's uh, exactly like a uh, generalization of uh, the p frame potential, uh, rather than sort of considering like a just discrete measure, you sort of consider any probability measure or number units here. You can try to define this also on RD, but for the purpose of this talk, I'm just going to sort of restrict to uh, potential that are sort of measure, uh, so potential on measure that are defined on the units here. And uh, one thing that you can actually show easily is that for P equal to two, then uh, this function is going to sort of be bounded below by one over N, where N is a number of uh, of uh, a non-zero eigenfunction, eigenvalue of uh, the matrix of second moment of uh, this measure here. And in particular, uh, the, the minimum is achieved exactly when uh, this, uh, this measure is uh, what's known as a probabilistic uh, type, uh, a type probabilistic frame for the spanning of uh, the uh, support of your measure. So you can actually sort of take the case of equality to be exactly the definition of a type probabilistic frame. So it's going to be like a measure that's going to achieve exactly this, uh, this uh, uh, lower bound. And uh, you don't have to worry about whether or not the measure span the entire uh, RD. Uh, you can just sort of consider this for the spanning, uh, for the, uh, spanning of uh, the uh, support of your measure. So this is going to provide a, a sort of a probabilistic or sort of tight frame time for, for this uh, support here. So um, there are many examples of this, especially for P equal to two. This quantity has been sort of uh, around in convex geometry. 
of either a notion of isometric or isotropic probability measure on, um, on a compact set. So here I'm looking at like on a the uh, units here. So it's a measure that satisfies this condition. And you can probably sort of recognize here that if, if this was discrete, this is going to be essentially the same as the frame condition for the tight frame. Uh, uh, they are uh, unique on any uh, convex body. So compact, convex, uh, and a set that's non-empty. Uh, if you center it at the origin, so if you sort of make the center of mass, uh, mass the origin, then you can actually prove that the uniform measure on this kind of set satisfy exactly the condition of this type. So there are many objects of this type that, uh, that are wrong and that have been studied in, uh, in different contexts. So in general, the minimizer of, uh, of uh, the probabilistic frame potential, which is uh, the case of this when P is equal to two, the minimizer are going to be exactly like uh, probabilistic type frame. And uh, they are going to be example of this isotopic measure in general. So uh, one interesting thing about this, uh, uh, this potential is that they are related to a potential that have been studied like uh, a while ago. And uh, this is actually like a pretty, a uh, uh, good summary of uh, some of this potential uh, that did back to Reyes and Fossman uh, in the early 1930s. So they studied probability, uh, sorry, they, they study like uh, um, optimization problem related to measure that are defined on compact set. And uh, if you sort of were to take the case alpha equal to two here, then you get essentially something that looks like the Newton kind of potential here. So they call this alpha potential, especially for alpha not equal to two. And they try to they give a complete description of uh, the uh, optimal measure for this, uh, for this class of uh, potential. So Martin and I, we actually stumbled uh, on a paper by Bjork who introduced something called energy integral, which is defined uh, by the formula that you have over here. So if you notice, uh, if you sort of uh, write out like uh, X minus Y to a power lambda is equal to X minus Y squared to a power lambda over two, then you can quickly, uh, at least on the unit here case, you can sort of see that this is exactly the function of the inner product between X and Y to a power lambda over two. So this is exactly related to the P frame potential. It's not exactly the frame potential, but uh, it's something quite similar to it. And uh, what uh, Bjork was interested in, it was not a question of minimizing this quantity, but rather maximizing this, uh, this quantity. And you can sort of see why he's interested in the maximum of, uh, of, this, of this functional. So he had some very interesting results. And uh, this is not exactly the way the results are stated, but uh, in summary, this is what he proved. He proved that for any lambda positive, the mass uh, of the maximal distribution, so essentially the support, of uh, the measure that sort of maximizes this uh, functional is uh, located on the boundary of the compact set that you take. Uh, for lambda less than two, he proved that the minimizer is unique. So the, uh, the maximizer is unique. And for lambda bigger than two, he actually proved that the, the maximizer has to be a discrete measure. And in fact, uh, the support of, uh, of this discrete measure is exactly, uh, is at most D plus one, where D is the dimension of the space that you, you're looking at. So this uh, was actually a motivation for Martin and I to look at the minimizer of the frame potential and to notice that this has some sort of uh, universality property in the following sense. So for any P between zero and two, uh, the probabilistic frame potential uh, is exactly minimized by discrete measure where the measure are exactly supported on orthonormal basis. So this is the existence of orthonormal basis so that the support of uh, my measure is uh, essentially like the orthonormal basis. So here, think about like uh, an orthonormal basis with uh, a copy of itself, uh, modulo plus or minus. So your measure will be a discrete measure that supports it on this set. And uh, it's going to be distributed evenly. This should be a D here. It should be not be F. So this is one over D. So uh, the... Uh, at uh, opposite point on your on the orthonormal basis or on each of the vector in your orthonormal basis, you just have to sort of put a mass so that they are sort of distributed evenly. And uh, what we sort of uh, sort of take away from here is that yes, this is again an instance of optimality where you have universality here because orthonormal basis essentially provide the minimizer for this uh, frame potential for the entire range between zero and two. And if you sort of go to a discrete case, this actually sort of persists, but you have to sort of make a small change. 
So uh, I'm hoping that you're sort of keeping track on all the different notation. So when I have P, uh, FP like this, it means like the probabilistic uh, different potential. So this is a continuous object. What this theorem shows is that uh, the measure that sort of minimizes is uh, a discrete measure. And that discrete measure is supported by an orthonormal basis. At the same time, if I look at the discrete version of this probability or of this uh, potential, as long as I take point, a number of points that are multiple of the dimension that I'm working on, then I also know that the only minimizer are going to be orthonormal basis in the entire range between zero and two. So between zero and two, it seems like uh, anything that minimizes both of these potentials seems to sort of be an orthonormal basis. Or well, there's a small caveat here that I'm only looking at like a multiple of, uh, of a dimension. And uh, this is actually one of the places where we don't know if this is going to be true for any number of points between zero and two. And I'll try to sort of uh, shed some light on what we know so far. All right, so uh, this is uh, a picture that some of you have seen before. Uh, uh, I'm not going to ask you to worry too much about sort of what's going on on this side of the picture. So don't pay too much attention to it. I can sort of talk about it later. But this is a minimizer of a discrete frame potential for value of P between zero and two, where I take the number of points to be the dimension plus one. So I just add one more point to the dimension. And uh, we prove at some point with Martin that the minimizer, at least for three points between zero and 1.6 was exactly an orthonormal basis with a vector repeating. And uh, we conjecture for many, many, um, I think about like uh, four or five years that this has to sort of be uh, the same case of the case when we take more and more point by just increasing the dimension by one. So I, I'm working in dimension D, you give me D plus one point and you look at the minimizer of this potential, they have to be essentially copy of orthonormal basis. And this was finally sort of proved and that sort of work sort of shown here. So orthonormal basis between zero and two seem to sort of be the minimizer. Uh, there's still a, a lot of gap between uh, some of the number that are going on here, but what I'm sort of trying to sh show first is, in this case, I take multiple of the dimension. In this case, I just take a dimension and I add one more point, and at least up to a point, um, roughly above 1.5, the optimizer for this seems to sort of be orthonormal basis again. So the bottom line, this is an over instance again of uh, universality in, the, in particular, universality of, of this orthonormal system in, in this case. So this was finally proved like uh, by Zoo and Zoo in 2020. And uh, Glasvin and uh, Josia Park uh, prove actually that in, in general, if you have a number of points, which is the dimension plus M, as long as M is less than two, uh, for P between zero and two, then uh, the minimizer are always like a, a, an orthonormal basis plus a copy, a few, a copy of a few vector in this, in this orthonormal basis. In particular, what you're going to have for P uh, in dimension two is that at least between zero and 1.3, the minimizer of the P-frame potential are always going to sort of be an orthonormal basis uh, plus a few vector of two. So uh, this led like uh, Bilic, Glazrin, uh, Madzek and uh, Park and uh, Vlasio to make a conjecture uh, about a year ago. They conjectured that if you look at the probabilistic uh, uh, p-frame potential, then its minimizer are always going to be discrete except when the parameter p is an even number, an even integer. So let's go back to the definition. So the def uh, key thing that they sort of state is that if you look at this potential right here, for every value of p larger than two, which is not an even integer, the minimizer has to be always a discrete measure. We have already proved that this is the case when p is less than two. So the question is what happens for p bigger than two? And to support the conjecture, they actually prove something um, that's not sort of a, a strong to the point to get the conjecture, but that's strong enough to suggest that the, maybe the conjecture is true. They prove that the minimizer of the different potential uh, the support has to have like uh, empty interior. And if you compare this result to the result by Bjork that I sort of present, you sort of see the similarity. It seems like the support of this measure that are optimal should be like uh, a set that are quite small in, uh, in a good sense. And uh, the conjecture is that in fact, it should be a discrete set. So, so far, I don't think uh, we have any indication whether or not this is true. Um, 
I think they prove in my paper that they prove that for some range of P, uh, this seems to sort of be the case, but uh, the general case is still, is still quite open right now. So this sort of uh, lead me to sort of uh, focus on what happened in dimension two. So whether or not we can sort of get a complete picture of this uh, potential where now we focus on, uh, on vector or on measure that are either defined on the unit circle or just measure that are defined on the unit circle. So between zero and two, in the discrete case, we know the minimizer. Uh, we know the minimizer in the continuous case as well. And this minimizer match exactly. They are just two copy of an orthonormal basis. That's, uh, that's all the minimizer have. And uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Shume, uh, Goodman, Gonzalez, and uh, Shuji, we actually sort of prove that uh, when P is bigger than two, uh, the optimizer for this are unique. And uh, they are exactly the four vector that you get by sort of putting them like uh, equal space, equal space in the in the upper circle of uh, of uh, in two dimension. So this is uh, the picture. So this is the only case where I think we have a complete picture today. Uh, this has sort of been proved, and I believe I sort of uh, talked about this last time when I, I gave this presentation. So this is not such a new result. So the result, uh, in fact, is actually follow from something a lot stronger, which has like a flavor of uh, this universality condition again, uh, which sort of says that uh, under some appropriate condition on the function f, we can actually prove that the, the vector that I just described, you take n vector equally space in the upper circle of uh, in two dimension. These are going to sort of give you like uh, the optimal configuration for a family of potential that are function of a distance between two points on, uh, between point on the circle. So it's not just true for the frame potential, but it's true for any function f that has uh, either this property, decreasing function, convex, or the function is uh, exactly satisfy the complete monotonicity condition. And in fact, I think if you know that the function is strictly, monoto uh, 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 strictly completely monotony, you can actually prove that the minimizer is unique. So when I talk about unique next year, I'm talking about uniqueness up to rotation, up to sort of flip and, and those kind of things. So the result that uh, that's here is actually like uh, a consequence of this larger, larger sphere right here. So again, this provides us another way to sort of think about optimality, uh, sorry, universality of uh, the optimal configuration that we have here. So for any bigger equal to five, we have some partial results. We know uh, that when uh, P is large enough, then uh, we have like unique minimizer and the minimizer are exactly like what you think about, like you take endpoint on the upper circle and you put them equally space. Uh, and then uh, so when N is uh, not too big, uh, when P is not too big, then uh, we have some partial result, but uh, this was not completely sort of uh, settled. So we've been sort of uh, looking at uh, two special cases for the last few years. So the case five and the case six. So five point and six point in two dimension. And uh, uh, about, I mean, so far this is what we know we can prove for sure. So for n equal to six, we know everything between zero and two because six is an even number. So the minimizer is exactly three copy of an orthonormal basis. We have proved according to the previous result that beyond 10, then the minimizer is exactly six vector that you put uh, in the upper half of the unit circle in two dimension. And in between, we have some sort of a partial result, but not a complete picture. For five, uh, the picture is actually was not that clear uh, what happened between zero and two. And that's what I'm going to sort of try to end the talk with. Uh, it seems to sort of be something like uh, a lot deeper going on here. Uh, the number of minimizers seem to sort of uh, be uh, changing. Uh, according to something that we don't we don't have like a complete understanding of right now. So uh, this is uh, again the picture for five and uh, I'm going to sort of end with uh, the slide. Uh, this hopefully will put out like uh, some of these paper pretty soon. So you can prove that between zero and log three over log two uh, for five point, the minimizer is uh, uh, a copy of an orthonormal basis. So you take an orthonormal basis you repeat two of the vector and then you pick any of uh, the, the other vectors. So essentially orthonormal basis repeated that what I call ONB plus here. And it seems to sort of be, uh, this is not actually seem to be true. This part is something that we can prove exactly. So for any N bigger than five and odd, 
we know that the minimizer just have to be like a copy of one of normal bases. So that's, uh, that's actually sort of something that we, we've been able to set up. Now, all the things that remain are sort of experimental. Numerically, you can show that when P is between zero and in fact this value, which is slightly larger than log three over log two, uh, the minimizer at least for five seems to sort of be the same thing that I just said. So copy of one of normal basis, okay? And uh, for P bigger than two, we know that the minimizer uh, is a five, uh, five vector put on the unit uh, circle equally space. Uh, we know that this was a case for P larger than uh, six. And it seemed like uh, between two and five, this is actually going to be the case. So the minimizer should not be unique, but at least the minimizer is going to sort of uh, include uh, the, uh, the one that we already have. And uh, for P between uh, this number and that one, uh, we seem to have like, and also between two and this other number, we seem to sort of uh, out of the blue have like uh, another family of minimizer. So they seem to sort of be like some sort of phase transition uh, at two different points for this case for five points. And when you go to seven points, you sort of observe the same thing. So for all the odd number, uh, they seem to sort of be like the many changing points, like uh, between uh, uh, one and two where one thing is a minimizer and then something else pick up, stay for as a minimizer for a while, and then sort of you get something, something new. And uh, uh, we have not been able to prove anything beyond what I have like for part three here. All the other results are just numerical. Um, so we've, uh, we've, uh, we've spent so much time on this now that we decide that it's probably, we, we might not be able to prove anything. So we, we, we're probably going to sort of be putting this out in the coming weeks and uh, Hopefully somebody can sort of look into it and, and uh, give a, uh, an example that what the numerics seem to suggest is actually the case. Uh, this is what happened in dimension two. So I suspect dimension three will be actually a lot more, more difficult, but it might be fun. But hopefully this is a way to actually generate things that could sort of persist and becoming like minimizer even to the case P equal infinity, which I know is of interest to, to many people here. So with that, I'd like to sort of uh, stop here and uh, thank you and take any question that you may have. Thanks, Paso. And we can all thank our speaker by clicking on the reactions button and then reacting appropriately. <laughs> so let's see, Dustin, if you'll stop the recording.